All right, here is a simple example of how the central limit theorem works in application. We've got uh, a very simple setup here where they're telling us that the heights of men um, are normally distributed, which is key, right? That Because if the population is normally distributed, we know we can apply the central limit theorem uh, regardless of the size of our sample. And so uh, we know that they're randomly distributed because they tell us to it, and it actually is in, in truth, um, with a mean of 69.5 and a standard deviation of 2.4. Now, these stats might be a little old by the time you watch this video, but this was pretty accurate at one particular time. The first thing we want to figure out is if we go out and just randomly choose right one adult male, what's the probability that that person is going to be? less than 72 inches tall. And this might be important because let's say you're designing uh, doorways for a bus or uh, an airplane, right? And you want to make it big enough such that um, the majority of men can walk through it without having to duck, right? You don't want to make it 70 inches tall because you go, hey, that's you know bigger than the average and the average man can get through it. But you know, with a normal distribution, the average is right in the middle. That means only 50% of all men could get through that doorway without uh, ducking. You probably want to, you know, aim a little higher, maybe get 90% or at least 80%, right? So you think, okay, let's make a door 72 inches tall and let's see what's the probability that a man can walk through that, i.e. what percentage of men are going to fit through that without ducking. And I've said this a million times, draw a picture. It's always good to draw a picture so you understand what's really going on. Here's my normal curve, right? Here's the mean, right in the middle, right? We should probably use mu because we're talking about a population. And that average is 69.5. And we want to figure out if we have a cutoff here at 72. how many men, right? What's the area under the curve that's below 72? All right. Well, there's a couple ways we can do it. We can do it by hand, right? We can calculate a z-score, which is always the value we're looking for minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So in this case, that would be 72 minus 69.5 all over 2.4, which will give us 1.0417 if we go to four decimal places and then we would have to uh, look that up into uh, one of our z tables and figure out what is the percentage uh, that corresponds to that if we want to use technology we can uh, break out our graphing calculators go to the normal CDF function, which was second VARs, right? So distribution, you can see that maybe it says DISTR above it. This brings up all of our different distribution uh, formulas and functions. If we choose the normal CDF function, we now have to give it a lower bound, an upper bound, and then uh, the mean and standard deviation. Now, if we're doing Z scores, if we leave the mean and standard deviation off, it just assumes a standard normal curve and it uses the mean and standard deviation of 0 and 1. So if you're going to use z-scores, you don't have to put anything uh, after it. But if you're going to use raw data, you have to give it the mean and standard deviation of your raw data. So I'll show it to you both ways, right? So the low end, uh, because we're dealing with you know less than or equal to 72, our low end is actually kind of negative infinity, which we can only do with uh, just doing a bunch of negative, you know, and then a bunch of nines. So some really big negative number. Some of the newer calculators start off with a lower bound of like negative one times e to the like 100 or something. It, it gives you a really small negative number already. But if not, you just type one in. Okay, now the upper bound is obviously going to be our um, <clears throat> z-score that we got. And then we can just hit enter. So we've got uh, 85.12 if we round to you know four decimals. So 85.12. All right. Now that's if we use the z-score. If we want to use raw data with the exact same function, the lower bound is still a really really small number, right? A bunch of nines. But now the upper bound is just 72 inches, and then we have to do 
comma the mean of 69.5 and then comma the standard deviation of 2.4 and you'll see that we get pretty much the same thing right the only reason why these differ is because we rounded right but 0.10417 was a rounded z-score whereas doing it this way the second way is a little bit more accurate so we still get the same first four decimals right so if we're only rounding to four decimals everything's fine but if we had to go to five well that would still round up six that would be a problem so it takes a long time before them to really deviate but you get the idea you can use it either way so that's one uh, way of doing it in technology. Another way, if you have access to it, StatCrunch is a beautiful tool, right? And we're basically just asking the question with this mean and this standard deviation. Oh, by the way, how'd I get here? Sorry, Stat Calculators Normal, and that brings up the normal calculator. And then all I did was see this is the standard normal on the right hand side. So if we wanted to do this, we'd have to go, uh, what's the probability that they're less than, right? Because we want to know what's the probability they're less than. A certain height uh, and our z-score remember was 1.0417 I think yeah that looks right but over here if we change the mean and standard deviation to the mean and standard deviation of our sample then we can just use the raw score and do less than 72 and you see that we get basically the same number left and right okay so two easy ways to do it in technology all right let's go back to the question so how does the central limit uh, come into play? It, it doesn't yet, really, kind of, not really. The central limit theorem tells us that when we're sampling over and over again, we get this uh, beautiful distribution of our samples, whatever we're calculating. So sample means, for instance, in this case, are going to be normally distributed. And the standard deviation of our sampling distribution, right? So when we talk about um, the standard deviation of our sample means, because in this case we're calculating just sample means, is always going to be equal to the standard deviation of our population divided by the square root of n, n being our sample size. Well, in the case of part a, our sample size was one. We were just picking one man at random, and that's why we used the standard deviation of the population, 2.4, because we divided that by the square root of one, and duh, that just stayed the same. However, part b, we're now going to recalculate this whole thing, right? So here's part B. We have the same picture, right? We still have a mean that's in the same spot. The mean is still 69.5. And we still want to know what's the probability that somebody is less than 72 inches tall. But we're not looking at just one somebody. We're looking at 100 somebodies. So instead of the standard deviation being... 2.4, we get the standard deviation of our sample means is equal to the original 2.4 divided by the square root of 100, which of course is 10. Right? I did that on purpose to make the math easy. And we get 2.4 divided by 10 or 0.24. And so now everything's the exact same. All that's changed is our standard deviation, right? If we do it with paper and pencil and Z scores, we have 72 minus 69.5. And then instead of dividing by 2.4, we divide by 0.24. And when we do that, our, our z-score is huge. Right? If, do the math. If you're, you basically get 10.417. And if you look that up you know, in any z-score uh, table, it's basically going to tell you uh, that that probability is, uh, well, so close to 100, it's not even funny, right? It's going to be like 99.99 repeating percent because you're 10 standard deviations away. You basically have uh, the entire uh, thing. And so what happens is our picture is no longer accurate because we have such a smaller standard deviation, our curve tightens up. Right? It looks like that. And so if, if this is 69.5, 72 is like out here. It's, you know, it's way out there at the end of the curve, and you're getting pretty much all of the area underneath the curve. Now, if you want to do it with technology, it's just as easy, right? both ways, that we can bring back our calculator, turn it back on, go back to our normal CDF, 
right? Our low is still that really big negative number, so just a bunch of negative nines, right? Our upper bound, if we want to do the z-score, 10.417, and hit enter, and you see it comes back as 1, right? If we did it with the raw data, obviously we'll get the same thing. Negative, bunch of nines, 72, an average of 69.5, and then our new standard deviation of point. 2, 4. You see again we get 1. If we go to this, all that we have to change is instead of 2.4, it's 0.24. And you'll see that the entire thing is shaded in and it tells us it's a 1. So that's the application of the central limit theorem. Uh, you're probably going to then have questions where they ask, okay, which of these two would be more useful to you if you were designing these doorways? Well, wouldn't part A be more useful to you? Because you really don't care what's the probability that, um, you know, an average set of 100 men can fit through. You, you're really concerned about each individual guy walking through that door. So you're really more concerned with the first part, and you can see that roughly 85% can fit through a 72-inch tall door, and you go, eh, that's acceptable to me. We don't need to build it any bigger, or maybe you want to push it to 90, and you can uh, actually figure that out, right? We can solve backwards by asking ourselves what height gives us 90% fitting through the door. So if we draw that picture, right, we have the same thing still 69.5 is our average, right? And we still have the standard deviation of 2.4. The only difference now is the x is unknown. We're looking for an x such that this space to the left of it is 90%. You can do it very easily with um, formulas because if you plug everything that you know into the formula, you have z equals... Uh, x we don't know, minus 69.5 over 2.4. And you might be thinking, well, how can I solve for that? There's two unknowns. There's z and there's x. But you forget we actually know what z is in a roundabout way because if we have 90% of the area below us, we can now figure that out from a table or our inverse normal function right on our calculator. If we go to inverse normal and you type in 0.9 and hit enter, it gives you the z-score that corresponds to having 90% of the area of the curve to the left of it. And you can also do the same thing in StatCrunch. Or you can go back over here to the standard normal because we're doing z-scores now. And if we delete everything out and put 0.9 on the right-hand side and then compute, it gives us the x, right, in this case the z, that corresponds to that. Or you go, you know what, we can save ourselves some time and go to the one that has the 2.4 that we like, put in 0.9 and compute this, and it says 72.575. So about 72 and a half, if we just make it like maybe 72 and three quarters or just round up to 73 inches, we're going to get 90% of the men going through that door without ducking. And if we go back here, um, we can do the, the math, right? Let's remind ourselves of what this z-score was. 1.2816, let's do that, 1.2816. So we now know that this is 1.2816 for z. And that's going to equal x minus 69.5 over 2.4. You multiply both sides by 2.4, right? You get 1.2816 times 2.4 equals x minus 69.5, and then it's just to add 69.5 to both sides, and that's going to give you the exact same answer of 72.57. So now when we do the multiplication, we get that, and then of course when we add 69.5 to both sides, we get that same 72.57. 57584 if we round to that many decimals, which was about the same we got, you know, from technology. So we need a little more than 72 and a half inches tall, 72 and three quarters, 73, whatever you want.
Okay, so those are a couple examples of how to use technology and formulas to solve simple central limit type questions.